For the first time since 1928, a sitting U.S. president is in Cuba. This is a historic visit, and it's a historic opportunity to engage directly with the Cuban people. But here at home, some Cuban Americans say it's a historic slap in the face. This is a staged photo op by the Castros, and they are playing this president. Team coverage of the president's historic visit starts now. The president says he wants to lay out his vision for the future, which he says is brighter than the past. Even though very few Cubans have Internet access, moments after Air Force One touched down, the president sent out a tweet saying, quote, Que bola, Cuba, just touched down here. Looking forward to meeting and hearing directly from the Cuban people. The president did not witness this scene firsthand. A protest in Havana by the ladies in white calling for freedom in Cuba was broken up by a mob of pro-communist demonstrators and government agents. Many of the women were dragged away and put onto buses as they shouted, "Let's! We, we're going to take you now to Havana where CBS4 News anchor Rudabe Shabazi and Elliot Rodriguez have more. Air Force One touched down at 4.45. The first family arriving here in a rainy Havana, met by Cuban dignitaries at the airport. Noticeably absent, however, was Raul Castro, but the president will meet with him during this busy agenda here on the island. Much of that, including direct interaction with the Cuban people who have been anticipating his visit. When President Obama arrived at Jose Marti International Airport, he became the first U.S. president in 88 years to set foot on Cuban soil. His first stop was the American Embassy. This is a historic visit, and it's a historic opportunity to engage directly with the Cuban people and to forge new agreements and commercial deals, to build new ties between our two peoples, uh, and for me to lay out my vision for a future that's brighter than our past. The first family then took a cultural tour of Old Havana with the much anticipated fanfare. The streets shut down as people from all over the world gathered to witness history. I just think it's overwhelming. We're so excited and you know, the so happy. The stalemate is breaking and it's very exciting. And I'm not sure what the implications are for the regime here of the stalemate breaking. Um, but in the long run, I hope it's good for everybody. It's time. The Obamas stopped at the cathedral, meeting Cuban Cardinal Jaime Ortega, who was influential in renewing U.S.-Cuba ties. I hope the U.S. Congress will lift the embargo, says this man, if not today or tomorrow, soon, because we cannot continue to live like this. This American is working on the new Fast and Furious movie shot in Cuba. This kind of kind of opened the doors for some, you know, some for the Cuban folks and for us as well to come down and, you know, be able to spend our money and you know, have fun. This philosophy student who supports the Castro regime says he's cautious about American foreign policy, but that he too is excited about this next step. How can you know us as a people, as Cubans we are, and you don't talk with us? Of course we are, we, we joy, we feel joy when we talk to Americans or Colombians, doesn't matter, we want to know the world as we hope the world wants to know us. Of course, not everyone agrees with that young man. My colleague Elliot Rodriguez was there as some of Cuba's best-known dissidents made their voices heard.